Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Mary if you're new here and today I'm so excited because we finally get to talk about the 24 books that I want to read in 2024. So grab a drink. We've got 24 books to talk about and I am so, so excited. First, I want to go over how I curated this list for my 24 in 2024 because last year I kind of just chose at random 23 books that I felt like I wanted to read and I wanted to switch it up a little and kind of make it a little bit more intentional. So first I chose all 24 books out of my physical TBR so nothing that I do not own or no new releases or anything like that and then I had some certain criterias I wanted to meet so certain genres, certain book lengths and I didn't want to do any repeats from last year except for one exception and if you have been around for a while you probably will guess what that one is. Without further ado let's just hop in. I guess we can go over first the first book that is the exception to the carryover of my 23 and 2023 and that is War and Peace. Let me know if any of you got that right because I've been talking about this bad boy all year. Long story short, didn't get to finish it in 2023. I'm 25% through and I I'm going to finish it in 2024, but that is the one carryover or one exception that I made for my 23 and 2023 that I didn't finish. I did not finish seven of the books on my list from last year or this year, I guess you could say, and I'm trying to finish one of them by the end of the year, so I didn't finish technically six, six to seven. So let's see how many we can finish this year. All right, I don't even know where to begin. Okay. Maybe we'll begin just from the first pile I have here. One genre that I wanted to add to my 23 and 2023 was manga because I own quite a bit of manga but don't really reach for it as often as other genres. And specifically this manga, I own almost the entire collection yet I have not read one of them. And that is Attack on Titan. So I want to read volume one in 2024 and hopefully that will get me into the series and get me reading the rest of it because why should I own all of them yet not read any of them? You catch my drift? I haven't also watched the show. Honestly, I don't know really much about this series and I don't know a lot about certain books. A lot, Like a lot of the times I'll know the genres of books or kind of somewhat of the premise, but I like going into most books blind. So I'm sorry if you're looking for all the synopses of these books. I don't have them and I probably won't read them for you, but just know I'm looking forward to all of them and I will probably reiterate that, but that's why I selected all of them to be on my TBR. <laughs> so yeah, book one, we will get it done. And that's kind of like the easiest book on this list because it's short, it's sweet, it's manga, you know? Next we can talk about the fantasies that I have on my 24 and 2024. The first one I've mentioned quite a few times and that is The Assassin's Blade by Sarah J Maas. So this is the, I guess, prequel of the Throne of Glass series. Some people recommend to read this first, some people recommend to read Throne of Glass first. I'm going to go this direction and read The Assassin's Blade first. It's been on like three of my TBRs this year and I just have had like a fear <laughs> to begin this series. But I think if I start it like in January or earlier in the year, I won't be as scared. I don't know why that just makes more sense in my head than starting a series at the end of the year. I feel like if you start at the beginning of the year, you just have so much more time to finish it by the end of the year. <laughs> the next book I have is Ruin and Rising by Leigh Bardugo. This is the third book in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. This has been on my TBR all year and I just haven't read it, but I really want to get into the Six of Crows duology, but I need to finish this book first because Six of Crows is kind of after Shadow and Bone and all of those books. So I just need to get to it and I feel like this is going to be a good push to get through the book and finish off that trilogy so I can move on with my life. <laughs> the next book we have here is Quite the Hunker and it is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I've heard mixed reviews about this book, mostly good, 
but mixed reviews and I bought it earlier this year and then when I saw the sheer size of it in person I was like yeah um maybe next time but I think it won't be that bad I've read bigger books and like the margins are big and the font is pretty big and it's a fantasy so I feel like it might go by pretty quickly I think this one I've heard that the world building can be a little confusing but I mean, that's the case with a lot of fantasies, so I don't know. I feel like it should be okay, but this one is possibly the second longest on this list other than War and Peace. I think it's above 800 pages, 830, including like the glossary, which I don't know why there's a glossary, and acknowledgements. So big hunker of a book, but I feel like it would feel like such an accomplishment if I were to read that book. Next I added this, I believe it's YA. Um, this is the second book in a duology, I believe, yeah, The Tiny Pretty Things. So this is Shiny Broken Pieces. I got this duology in like a blind date with the book. So I got two in like one set and I read the first one, not this past year, but the year before and it was okay and um, I just want to finish this. I don't know if I'm going to keep the duology, but because I have it, I say might as well read it, and if I don't end up liking it, I'll just donate it, but this is like a duology about like a group of dancers, and it's kind of like a little bit of like a thriller mystery, but also like YA drama. A little messed up to be honest, but <laughs> for YA. But I just want to finish that duology. Next, I have a couple romances to kind of break up all of these more so serious-ish type books or drama-filled books. So the first one is Lizzie and Dante by Mary Bly. So I think this is kind of like a literary fiction meets romance. This has been on my TBR for quite a couple years now. I first heard it on Noelle Gallinger's um, YouTube years ago when she read it and she was like obsessed with it and um, I don't really know what it's really about. The cover is beautiful and I don't, I don't know why I haven't read it yet but I just want to like I feel like it haunts me every time I look at my bookshelf. Just want to finally read it. <laughs> the next romance I have on this list is Before I Let Go by Kenny V. Ryan and this one again I feel like a lot of people say it's very very emotional and not so much like a cutesy romance but a very like hard-wrenching romance. And I think it's like um, a second chance romance, I believe. And the push I got to read this like ASAP and put it on my 24 and 2024 is that I got the arc for the second book. So I'm like, I haven't even read the first book. So I really, really need to get to this so that I can read the arc. This book I had on several TBRs as well. And this will also be attached to my goal of reading from Polish authors. And that is Drive Your Plow Over the Bones of the Dead by Olga Tokarczuk, I think is how you say her last name. So this is kind of a, I believe it's like a mystery about a woman in a remote Polish village. I think there might be some type of murder happening, not sure. So I've heard mixed things about this book, but um, I was very intrigued based off the title and the synopsis when I read it months ago and I just haven't read it yet so I'm really looking forward to reading this. I put it on this list. I found in this past year when I didn't know what to read next I would reference my 23 and 2023 and try getting through that list so you'll see like a lot of books that I've been avoiding or that I just am like a little afraid of reading I put on this list to kind of like face that fear and actually get to it. The next book I have here is actually a poetry collection. So I had on my book bingo for 2023 to read a poetry collection and I I didn't. So and it's like that and Polish authors the two I have left on my book bingo and I just don't think I can get to it by the end of the year. I will try but very frustrating. So I'm putting a poetry collection on this list and I just picked one of my Rilke different collections of poems that I have. So this is Rainer Maria Rilke's new poems. And so it's a collection, I believe, of two of his independent volumes. Two independent volumes published in 1907 and 1908. I'm looking forward to it and it does look pretty thick, but these 
a lot of his collections that I like to get, I like to get the ones that have the German on one side and the English on the other side. Uh, I don't know German, but I don't know. I feel like it's really nice to have that and see that. My brother-in-law is German, so maybe I can quiz him and be like, is it translated properly or not? <laughs> Next, we have a couple thrillers here as well. Kind of thriller and horror is a genre that I don't reach for a lot, but I do enjoy thrillers when I do read them. So of the few that I own, I added a couple that I have on this list. And the first one I have mentioned before, and that is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. This one I've heard fantastic things about. It is a domestic thriller, I believe. And my boyfriend is actually in the middle of reading it. I bought it for him. <laughs> but I was also like, I want to read it too. It's been on a couple of my TBRs. I'm kind of afraid of reading it. I don't know why. I feel like as soon as I know a book is really popular and a lot of people rave about it, I instantly get scared of reading it because I'm like, well, what if I don't like it? And then the next one, I don't know honestly where I got this from. It might have been from a little library. I'm not completely sure, but it's Road of Bones by Christopher Golden. And I was just going through all of my books that I have, and this one kind of kept catching my eye. And I was honestly going to add a Stephen King book to this list because I had The Shining from Stephen King last year on my 23 and 2023, which I gave a three stars. But then, I don't know, I feel like this one just gave me such like wintry spooky vibes and I think it is basically a winter spooky thriller so that's all I need to know hopefully I can get to this in January because I feel like because it's wintry if I don't read it in the new year when it's still wintry I'm not going to read it till like December and I feel like December the books I leave for December I never end up reading because December is just so jam-packed in my personal life and also for all the end of year YouTube videos. The next book I have here is the only sci-fi that I have on this list and you guys would have seen this on several of my TBRs as well and that is Red Rising by Pierce Brown. I'm just terrified of starting the series again. It's kind of similar to Throne of Glass where like I've heard such good things about it that I feel like I know I'm gonna love it and then I'm not gonna wanna stop reading the series. Uh, Throne of Glass though, I have like the first five books Red Rising, I only own book one, so, you know, I just don't want to have more books to add to my collection when I have so many already at home, but yeah, this is, I believe, um, people said it was like Hunger Games in space. The next couple books I have are non-fictions that I want to read in 2023. Uh, last year, I added a couple non-fictions as well to my list, and I felt like that was a nice mix-up. I read uh, one of the two and so hopefully I end up finishing these two and these two I'm just really 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 excited for and I just kind of want to have that extra push to get to them this year. So the first one is Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer and this one I believe is all about um, like indigenous life. Oh she's like a botanist. All about nature and that's like if a book is about nature that's all I really need to know to be interested in it I love nature I love being outdoors I love knowing the way that humans used to exist in nature without technology and all the advancements that we have these days it's so fascinating to me and I feel like I've only heard amazing things about this book every time I look at this book I like feel like smiling I don't know what's in it I don't know what I'm gonna learn but I just feel such good vibes from this book. And then the second nonfiction I have is Forever Strong by Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. I've been following her for years on Instagram and she just came out with this book all about kind of like aging and how to age well and she talks a lot about like protein and um, muscle building, strength training, all of those things and I'm really interested in all of them so I bought her book. It came out I believe two months ago. I haven't had the chance to pick it up yet so Again, I just want that extra push to actually pick these books up and get to them. All right, we've got two stacks left. We've got general fiction and classics. I'm leaving classics for last. The next book we have is Mitch Albom's The Little Liar. So this is his newest release that just came out in November. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I love Mitch Albom. He's one of my favorite authors and honestly an autobi author. And this is a story about a little boy, I believe, 
um, during World War II. I feel like you can never go wrong with Mitch Albom. He's not everyone's cup of tea, but he is my cup of tea. Absolutely adore his writing, so I'm so pumped for that. The next book I have, I'm honestly really, really excited about, and I'm glad that I waited a bit to read it because it is Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. So I read David Copperfield this past year and absolutely adored it. And so once I read it, I picked this book up because this is like a David Copperfield retelling. And I've heard very, very good things about this book. It's honestly very, very heavy. I don't know what the pages are made out of. Yeah, I wanted to wait a bit before picking it up because... I don't know sometimes with retellings like if you read them too close to the actual story it's about I don't know I feel like you don't get as much enjoyment out of it so I feel like it's been long enough that I can get into this book and enjoy it and again this cover I just what a beautiful design I think I mentioned that when I bought this <laughs> The next book we have, oh, I'm so excited for as well, is When We Were Orphans by Kazuo Ishiguro. I just finished reading my first Ishiguro book, which was Never Let Me Go, and I gave that book five stars. It was on my 23 in 2023, and I was, like, avoiding it like the plague. And then there was just, I just one day was like, you know what, I think I'm ready to read it. And thank God I did, because I loved that book. So I own, I believe, like four of his books. So I'm now so excited to get into the rest of his novels. And this one is also one of his most popular, I believe. And I believe it is about an orphan who tries to find his birth parents, something along the lines of that. But yeah, again, so excited. And I absolutely adored his prose and his writing in Never Let Me Go what a beautifully written book amazing the next book we have i've also been kind of avoiding like the plague and that is haruki murakami's kafka on the shore so i own or we own because i typically buy these for my boyfriend but i think we have about six no seven or eight of murakami's works and my boyfriend has almost read all of them and i've read zero i don't know i'm kind of just Again, weary about reading Murakami. Very mixed reviews online. My boyfriend adores his writing. I've heard a lot of women don't like his writing because of the things or the, the way he portrays women. But anyways, this is just a lot of people recommend to start with Kafka on the Shore. So that's what I wanted to start with. I put it on my TBR, I think for my fall TBR, and I never got to it. So yeah, I just need to read it. My copy is also severely damaged, water damage, and I don't know where this pink ink came from. Then the last fiction book we have here, this series, every time I look at it or think about it, I get heart palpitations, I swear, but it is The Winners by Frederick Bachman. So this is the last book in the Beartown series, which I have been avoiding because I read the second book in April, Us Against You. And now I'm just terrified of finishing the series because I just know it's going to break my heart. It's probably going to put me in a reading slump because I don't want the series to end. But if I don't force myself to read this, I will not read it for years. I literally did not read the last Harry Potter book for like 10 years because I didn't want the series to end. So I know myself. I can do that. I can have this on my shelf for years and years and years and not read it, but I need to. So it is a big, big old book and I need to finish it. So that's that. Lastly, we have here four classics that I want to read. Um, last year, I had so many classics on my 23 and 2023 because I really wanted to emphasize reading more classics last year or this past year. And it worked. I read so many classics, way more than I thought I would. And so now I feel like I don't need to focus on that goal as much because it's just a genre that I love and that I'm not so afraid of anymore. But I still wanted to add some to this list. The first one I've had on, I believe, one of my TBRs, and that is Beloved by Toni Morrison. Everyone talks about Beloved. Everyone loves Beloved, and I just want to finally get into Toni Morrison. And I am a little, like, weary of getting into Toni Morrison because, I don't know, I just, I'm a little terrified. But 
I am so pumped to get into her uh, books. And I think I have about three of her books. I have Beloved, um, The Bluest Eye, and oh, and Song of Solomon. The next book I want to read is Mansfield Park by Jane Austen. So I have started reading Jane Austen this year. I think probably for the first time, I believe. So I read Pride and Prejudice, and right now I'm reading Northanger Abbey. And both I read with my sister, and so she mentioned that she wants to read Mansfield Park next. So I was like, okay, that's fine. Like, I'll read it with you. And so I added it to this list to kind of keep me accountable. Not a biggest fan of this. Co well, it's okay. But I do want to get uh, a different copy of Mansfield Park. So I feel like my reward, if I finish this book, is to get the copy that I want. <laughs> or the edition that I want. The next book I'm so excited about, and that is Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. So I read The Brothers Karamazov this past year, which was my first Dostoevsky, and absolutely adored it. Gave it five stars. I think about it almost every day. And I wanted to add one of his books to my list this year. And so I decided to do Crime and Punishment. I also got Crime and Punishment for one of my friends for Christmas. I hope she's not watching this. And I got her um, a specific edition and translation. And I bought myself the same one because this translation, I, I think it's this one, is by Constance Garnett, which I believe their translations aren't always the best. And so I wanted to get a specific one. So I won't be reading from this copy because I don't have the other copy yet. It's coming in the mail. But I'm so so excited to get back into Dostoevsky's writing. I really miss it and so I am so pumped and this is like nothing compared to the length of The Brothers Karamazov. And last but certainly not least we've got Middlemarch by George Eliot. So I have been wanting and dying to read Middlemarch this past year because I've only heard amazing amazing things about Middlemarch and again with like Mansfield Park there's a certain edition that I am dying to buy for Middlemarch, but like I don't want to buy it if I haven't read it yet. So I have a little treat <laughs> for myself once I finish this book is to buy the Penguin English Library edition because it is it's just so beautiful and I really want it on my shelves. But um, I told myself if I finish this book, then I will be able to buy myself that copy. But yeah, everyone always talks about how Middlemarch is beautiful, and I am just so intrigued and excited to get into this world. I believe Middlemarch was released in like a serialized publication where there was like chapters released per week or something like that. I might follow along that. I need to look into it more, but um, if not, I might be thinking about another book, but I'm pretty sure Middlemarch was one of those that um, was published you know chapters at a time versus the whole novel at once so if it was published like that I might try to follow that schedule because you know you get to enjoy it the way that it was intended to be enjoyed and so I feel like if you can do that with classics and if you can like wait wait it out and read it for a long span of time like I think um, some of Dickens's books were also published like that so I think I might try doing something like that with this, unless I am thinking about the wrong book, but I'm pretty sure. So those are the 24 books that I would like to read in 2024. Let me know if you guys are doing the 24 in 2024 or 12 books in 2024, whatever. Whatever books are on your 2024 TBR, please let me know what they are down below. And if you've read any of these books, please let me know your thoughts. No spoilers, but please let me know your thoughts. Thank you for spending this time with me today. I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you guys very, very soon. Happy reading. Bye. Lazy Sunday mornings, high